right, so let's take a look at Area 51. Now, if you've never seen this from Google Earth, it's actually a pretty remarkable site. The size of it is pretty unbelievable. I calculated that if you were to go 35 miles per hour because it's like maybe dirt or mountainous roads, that it would take almost two and a half hours to get from one security point to the opposite side of the secured area. In fact, Area 51 is so big that if you were to take Vatican City and you were to place over it, you would need 5,000 different Vatican cities to cover not just Area 51, but also the Neo Air Force Base, which is the surrounding area that is also secured by the same security as Area 51. So just the general security area can cover 5,000 Vatican cities. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Area 51 and see what we got here. This is called Groom Lake. This is where Area 51 is situated just south of it. Uh, many of you might be aware of this, but I just wanted to show you real quick uh, where Bob Lazar was talking about. And he was talking about Papoose Lake, which isn't technically where Area 51 is, but it's still well within the secured area that I was talking about earlier. So the first thing I want to show you real quick is the path that Bob Lazar would have had to take to go from Groom Lake to Papus Lake. So basically Papus Lake is exactly 15 miles south of Area 51. When you take a look at Area 51, what you'll notice is that there's actually two different paths that you can take to get to Papus Lake. You can either go on the west side or the east side. And if you read Bob Lazar's description of having worked S4, one of the things that he described was that there were these hangars that were slanted around 60 degrees that were situated in the southern range of the Papus mountain range. So the Papus mountain range is this mountain range right over here. And I think because of his descriptions, many people have assumed that S4 must be situated somewhere around this area, possibly these front facing mountains uh, that seem to be at a 60 degree slope and kind of fits the description of being near the Papus Lake and within the southern range of the Papus Mountain Range. However, no matter how many times I've scanned the area, I just can't find anything. So I started thinking like, how do you find S4? Then I remember how Bob Lazar was describing that these individuals had to take a bus to get to the site. And then realizing that this is a Nevada desert, 100 plus degrees, it suddenly dawned on me that the officials from Area 51 probably wouldn't have their scientists be walking in 100 plus degree desert weather for a prolonged amount of time. Meaning wherever the entrance of S4 is, it's very likely that it's near some kind of tire tracks. Now going with this logic, something that really struck me was this concept that you can either take the west road to Papus Lake or as you can see over here, you can take the east road to Papus Lake. There's even an uh, intersection over here that you can kind of cut in. But if you can cut into Papus Lake from this road, answer me a question. Why is there a secondary road right above it that seemingly slithers through the mountains? Okay, so whereas most people are assuming that S4 is right over here, what I suddenly noticed, and maybe it's, it, maybe it's a natural formation. I'm not saying for certain that this is artificial, but it certainly looks suspicious. So just go a few hundred miles southeast of these mountain ranges that we assumed S4 might be located and check out what we notice over here. Do you, do you see what I'm seeing here? And like I said, this, it's possible that this could be a natural formation. But there is something very geometrical about the site that's kind of drawing my attention. So let's go back in time and see how this site shifts with time. Look at this rock, or if this is a rock, look how symmetrical this is looking. And look at these ridges, right? Almost seems like rectilinear ridges that are embedded within themselves. Here's another version. Here's another version. And that's the uh, earliest image that we have. So what do you think? Do you think that this site could possibly be an artificial installation embedded just a few hundred yards from what we originally thought S4 was? And that is actually very close to an inner road that would allow a bus to take people close to this region. So if you don't think that this is artificial, 
then let me show you something that might shock you. If you were to take that road that I just talked about, the inner road that slithers within the mountain, and we were to just follow it up just a little bit, let's see what happens over here. And just so you know, these are not roads. These are drainages, water drainages. And you can tell because if you look closely, the roads actually have two distinct tire tracks. So if we follow the tire tracks, look what happens. The tire tracks slither back into the mountains, okay? This little region right here is probably a security checkpoint. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's something that I've been seeing all over Area 51 where the security uh, kind of chills out with their uh, pickup trucks there. And then, so let's just keep following this road. And look what happens here. If we turn this to over here, we can see that the road starts winding into the mountain. And remember, this is still the Papoose mountain range. We're not that far off from the site that we assumed S4 to be, which was right over here. So we basically went from here, took that inner road around into the mountain range and let's and look what happens look at this we got all kinds of obvious artificial structures if this was a random mountain in nevada i might assume that this is like a mine that's that's embedded inside the mountain but we know that there's no civilian mines in area 51 so the question is where are these tracks heading and if you look around the mountain range, you will see all kinds of strange rock-like structures that just kind of looks a little bit too artificial uh, to be natural. Look at this. And let me spin that around real quick so you guys can see the other rock right over here. And you can see there's literally a path that goes right to this weird structure embedded literally on top of a mountain, okay? And we'll keep scanning it, going through to time, so you guys can see how artificial this structure actually looks. I mean, this is pretty obvious to me, uh, you know, when you when you kind of look at this. And look, let me wrap it around here. You see that there is all kinds of installations completely on top of a mountain, but not just on top of a mountain, but it kind of goes into the mountain, whatever whatever this artificial structure is. Here it is again. Let's get a more top-down view so we can see all the structures that are embedded within this mountain. So we got this artificial structure. We got this one over here. Uh, there seems to be another one a little bit lower in the mountain. Uh, we got another one up here on the back side. Uh, if we spin around, we see that there's all kinds of intersections and roads that lead all around this mountainous uh, complex. And then, uh, you know, and if we were to just keep following these tracks, we can actually go all the way over here. I'm not sure if this is a road or a drainage, but let's turn it around. Uh, but here you can see physical tire tracks and physical structures embedded inside the mountain. So you might be saying, so what? Area 51 has underground installations and mountains. Wait a second, this is a little bit more than just that. We're talking about an installation that is surrounding the entire top area of a mountain, but not just any mountain, okay? We're not talking about Area 51, guys. We're talking about the Papoos Lake. We're talking about the southern aspect of the Papoose mountain range. So whereas we might have thought S4 was here and there might be suspicious looking structures over here, uh, what I found most interesting is this inner road that just from an urban layout perspective, it just doesn't make sense that you would need to have an inner road unless there was something that was in between the outer road in Area 51 itself. There has to be something there. And the fact is, people didn't know about this before Bob Lazar's case. So Bob Lazar was the first one to talk about underground military installation in Papoose Lake in the actual mountain ranges. 
and talking about the fact that there were underground installations. And I don't think anybody at the time was assuming that Area 51 had all these kinds of underground bases. So to me, just by examining Google Earth, there's a circumstantial way to kind of support Bob Lazar's claim. And so if Bob Lazar is right about Area 51, then we can't just take one of his claims. We also have to assume that alien spaceships, UFOs, saucers, extraterrestrial crafts, whatever you want to call it, that these things were at least at one time being back engineered in this area, possibly in some kind of underground installation around this mountain range. This is really important information, uh, especially in this new age of disclosure. Now that Bob Lazar is talking, I kind of wanted to present this episode to showcase his case and, and what Bob Lazar had to say since that eventful day in 1989. Thank you so much for sticking with me for this very long, but I think very interesting episode. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to share this with a friend or you can subscribe if you have not subscribed. Now, for those who don't know, this channel is basically nearly pro bono. Uh, the amount of views that we get and the type of revenue that we make, it's just kind of chump change, so to speak. So if you have the means and you would like to support this channel, uh, one way you can do so is by visiting patreon.com slash second earth. Thank you again for joining me in this truth seeking journey. This is Felipe Osorio signing out.